Hey folks, I'm pop culture historian Dave Sundstrom, and you've somehow managed to stumble upon my little YouTube channel where I talk about music, movies, and mostly television from decades gone by. Today I'm going to dedicate this video to one of the nicest all-around people in show business. I am, of course, talking about Christy McNichol. Once a bona fide megastar, you don't see Christy much on the screen anymore, but every now and again she pops up right here on YouTube just like she did a week or so ago when she encouraged fans to support Aspironet's holiday gift-giving program. I'll post a link to that video in the description section of this video. So, why did Christy disappear? And what has she been doing? Well, don't worry. I'll cover all of that in depth in just a moment. And then after that, I've got a video slideshow that contains many of Christy's greatest magazine covers. I think you're really going to enjoy those. And then I'll wrap things up with a look back at a favorite guilty pleasure film of mine, 1982's The Pirate Movie, which paired Christy with another teen heartthrob actor Christopher Atkins. So let's get going, because the truth about Christy McNichol is that, in many ways, she's just like you and me. She's had some triumphs, but she's also had her fair share of challenges along the way. Okay, so where do I start with this one? Seriously, folks, I'm going to have to rein myself in a bit. Because for about 10 years, from the mid-70s on, it felt like Christy McNichol was everywhere. But since this video is a whatever happened to video, I'm only going to mention a handful of my favorite memories before I provide an update regarding what she's been up to more recently. Otherwise, this thing could last hours. I still remember this Dynamite magazine, and even though it says Meet Christy McNichol, I'm pretty sure I already knew who she was. Even before she became a breakout star on the TV show Family, more on that in a moment, she had been in commercials and guest starred on a number of shows like Starsky and Hutch and The Bionic Woman. However, like I said, it was on Family where Christy really became a breakout star. She was the youngest member of the Lawrence family, a tomboy nicknamed Buddy. And I don't know, maybe it's just my old foggy memory, but it seemed like many, many of the shows during its five season run centered on Buddy. A couple of other things worth mentioning are that, yes, that's a pre-family ties Meredith Baxter Bernie there, and the actor who played the father on this show is James Broderick. Yep, that's right, father of Ferris. And here she is, cute as a button with Scott Bayo, guest starring on The Love Boat. Seriously, folks, back then, being on the love boat was a rite of passage for every up-and-coming young star, as well as many of the really big stars from Hollywood's golden age. And I've also got to mention Little Darlings. If I remember correctly, this was Christie's first big starring role in a major motion picture. I haven't seen this movie in years. I kind of wonder if it holds up. Still, the cast is great. Along with Christie, you've got Tatum O'Neill, Armand DeSante, and a very young Matt Dillon. And even though it was a major flop, I've got to, at least, for a moment, talk about the pirate movie. Sure, there are a lot of things that you can nitpick about this film, but the soundtrack is incredible, and it was here that it dawned on me that Christy really had a wonderful voice, and it was clear that she loved singing. Why this is so surprising, I do not know. Because prior to this movie, Christy had released an album with her brother Jimmy and done some singing in the movie The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia. Somewhere after the pirate movie and before Just the Way You Are, I remember hearing about difficulties that the studio was having getting that movie completed. I also vaguely recall hearing that there were issues with getting Christy on the set. Still, when the movie was released in 1984, I remember seeing it in the theater with a group of friends and we all agreed that Ms. McNichol was the very best part of the movie. And then you know what? She kind of disappeared for a few years. Rumor has it that she just wanted to live a normal life and went back to school to learn how to cut and style hair. And then in 1988, Christie resurfaced on Empty Nest, an NBC situation comedy which was a spin-off from one of my favorite shows, The Golden Girls. This TV series was a ton of fun, mainly because of the standout cast. Isn't that always the case? Which included Richard Mulligan, Dinah Manoff, and David Leisure. A year later, Christy bared her soul to People magazine and talked about her bipolar disorder and the severe depression that is brought about by a chemical imbalance in her body. Tough stuff. And Christy had been dealing with it for years. 
At the time the article was written, Christie had been working as an in-demand actress for over 20 years, and yet she was just 27. You know, when I think about other child actors that rode a similar wave of fame during the 70s and 80s, not many of them ended up in as good of a place as Christie. And that's even with the health issues that she was so bravely fighting. In 1992, Christie made the tough decision to leave Empty Nest. And when she returned for the series finale in 1995, that final bow she took on stage with the rest of her castmates, well, it really was a final bow. So what has she been doing since then? Well, the answer is really a whole heck of a lot. During the 90s, Christy hosted her own tennis tournament, which benefited the HELP Group, a charity that serves children with special needs related to autism, learning disabilities, ADHD, developmental delays, abuse, and other emotional problems. Christy has also volunteered time assisting with marine wildlife conservation groups. From what I understand, she has even participated in rescues from time to time. End of the day, for a very long time, it seems to me that Christy had wanted one thing. Really, the one thing that fame and fortune in Hollywood couldn't give her. A normal life. Years earlier, when she'd gone to school to learn how to become a hairstylist, I think she knew that she was going to have to take really drastic action if she ever wanted any sort of normalcy in her life. And for that reason, in June of 2001, Christy announced through her publicist that she was officially retiring from acting. Now to be clear, that retirement has been her way of saying that she wasn't going to be in front of the cameras anymore. It didn't mean that she didn't love the art and craft of acting. In fact, I've heard that Christy has spent some of her free time with up-and-coming actors, helping them to hone their talents. And in 2012, Christy came out of the closet and expressed a desire to be more open, honest, and authentic about the person that she truly was. At the time, she also said that she was coming out to try and help other kids who might be bullied because of who they were. I have just got to say, what a truly noble thing to do. And even more recently, Christy lent her support to the Los Angeles Valley College's music department and encouraged other lovers of music to do the same through the school's foundation, which provides student scholarships and supports various campus music programs. That type of support shouldn't come as a surprise to any of us who watched her sing her heart out decades earlier. In fact, Christy became familiar with the school's music department because she wanted an outlet for her passion for singing and enrolled in a class where she could participate in the college's choir. How cool is that? So, this whatever happened to video has my favorite kind of ending. The kind where I get to say that whoever is being spotlighted has managed to avoid most, if not all, of the pitfalls that far too frequently do folks in when it comes to the world of showbiz. Christy truly is living her best life. I'm sure it still has trials. I'm sure it still has its fair share of ups and downs. But you know what? It's a normal life. And that, when it comes right down to it, is a pretty darn good thing. If you're trying to find Christy out there on Twitter or Facebook, well, you're not going to have a whole heck of a lot of luck. But you know what? I think that's all right. I think that's part of her effort, her attempt to just step away from it all and live that normal life that I've talked about.
When the pirate movie debuted during the summer of 1982, it was immediately panned as a quick money grab to take advantage of the then popular Broadway revival of Gilbert and Sullivan's Pirates of Penzance. It was a box office bomb. The critics hated it. And the movie, which was filmed in Australia and starred Christy McNichol, Christopher Atkins, and Ted Hamilton, well, it failed both domestically here in the U.S. as well as internationally. However, over the years, the film, first through repeated viewings on HBO, VHS tapes, and then DVDs, has gained more than a cult following. Yes, this movie is fondly remembered and has become beloved by many. This movie, more than any other that I can think of, just screams, I was made in the 80s. It's super cheesy for sure, but at the same time, it's sweet and it's innocent. It takes the viewer back to a time when things were simpler and it was okay to mix classic Gilbert and Sullivan with pop music. Sure, there are purists that were appalled by this, but again, this was the 80s. It was okay. Nobody was going to get hurt. By the way, I love the heavy-handed Baskin Robbins product placement at the beginning of this movie. It's like the makers of this film wanted everyone to know right up front, nothing was sacred here. And yes, there is a lightsaber reference in the movie. This movie doesn't take itself seriously in any way. It's a tongue-in-cheek, wacky comedy of a movie. As mentioned previously, it's based off of The Pirates of Penzance, which, if you really think about it, is pretty lighthearted in its own right. Ted Hamilton is quite good with his zingy one-liners. It's a movie just to have fun with and laugh at. Notice that I said at and not with. Let's talk about the original songs in this movie, written by Terry Britton, who has written a ton of songs for folks like Olivia Newton-John and Tina Turner. I think those songs are really good. Okay, one could make an argument that Pumpin' and Blowin' is not a good song, but How Can I Live Without Her, Hold On, and Happy Ending are instantly memorable and great songs in their own right. They sound like they were written in the late 70s and early 80s, and that is absolutely not a bad thing. And who knew Christy and Chris could sing as well as they do? This movie doesn't overstay its welcome. It clocks in at a very reasonable 104 minutes, not too short, not too long. Far too often, movies, especially musicals, seem to creep over two hours, and in some cases get darn close to three. For me, most films, especially musicals, should be able to tell their story in less than two hours. All I want is to hear a handful of good songs, laugh a little bit, and be taken away from reality for just a little while. And in the case of the pirate movie, it accomplishes all three of those things very well. The full movie is on YouTube right now, by the way. At some point, they'll probably take it down. But my guess is that it will always be somewhere online where you can watch it legitimately. It's an often maligned musical gem, but you know what? totally worth watching. At least that's my opinion. What do you think? Do you remember this film and did you like it? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you like this video, I'd love a thumbs up. I'd also be honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching.